Today I want to cover two mistakes that I just see every single time with people on their journey to their first 100k and these are based on the examples that I get in my Facebook group which is free you can just join them and it just every single time I have a one-on-one -on -one workshop with somebody this keeps popping up which is why I wanted to create a video to address it so that I can send it to those people and if you're watching this just make sure to not do these two things and you'll get to your first 100K as fast as possible. The first one is overthinking. Now, overthinking, out of all the calls I'm having, this is basically a 100% thing. Every time I call with somebody on their journey to their first 100K, it's basically uh, they're giving me a plan. I'm asking them what type of products you wanna launch uh, so that I can assist them, help them, see how I would do it. And just every single time, it's, I'm analyzing this, I'm researching this, I'm reading books about this, there's audiobooks about that, I'm thinking of buying this course, joining this community, doing that, and, and just, and this do, it doesn't matter if you have like 10,000 a month income or a thousand a month income, it just, it's always the same thing. And I noticed that the older people get, the more this happens. The more educated you are, the more this happens. And yet when I kind of go to these conferences and I mingle and network with all these super successful people, I'm trying to learn from them, right? I also had this podcast basically for the sole purpose of learning what, what kind of makes uh, everybody tick. Uh, the podcast is called Impact Talks. You can look it up. But basically in there, uh, same thing. I'm just looking at like, what are the commonalities? And, and most of the commonalities are these people are getting like really good at a specific skill. And this skill involves launching basic things at scale. And I'm not talking like, you know, one or two products or even one or two businesses. In some cases, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the percentages. Most people who are successful haven't done it on the first try. They haven't done it on the first product. There's like usually hundreds of iterations. Um, I also like relate that to maybe building a website. When you're building a website, especially in WordPress, you can see how many revisions you've done to, for instance, your homepage. I mean, I'm in the hundreds, maybe even thousands on some of my home pages. And so this is a business that's like, you know, almost a decade old. Of course, you're going to have so many revisions. Uh, and so, but that's the difference, you know, getting to your first 100K is not about uh, just thinking, analyzing, researching. It's about doing all of those revisions as fast as possible. And the more experience you get. So in those conferences, when I'm hanging out with these like, seven figure eight figure plus entrepreneurs uh these people they just figured out how to do those revisions really fast at scale with multiple things when i'm talking with like friends uh and you know we're talking about for instance taking like a blog website and building a, like a blog website uh for specific niches uh the first you know thought processes where we go to is not just oh we'll write like one blog or something it's like how can we localize it to like 100 languages how can we automate that what code can we write to do that uh and so the thought processes that those you know, from those friends that I get and that I'm learning from is just everything is at scale, everything's much faster, and everything is in, in thought processes of automation. How can you do this at scale? Now, I don't want to overwhelm any, anybody, but just, you know, overthinking isn't going to help unless you have the skills to know how to execute those things. Because even when you're overthinking and you want to localize this, you know, website into 100 languages, there's software that does that automatically for you. So the actual action and execution that you need to do is just write one blog post. And that one blog post suddenly becomes a 100 blog posts. Uh, and so it's, it's never about like, don't think about the journey of what it's going to be like when you have 100 blog posts. Think about just writing that one blog post and then once it's written now start thinking about okay well how can we scale this but in the beginning of your journey especially in that your first 100k journey just my main recommendation is just think about that first blog post just get that one out there just do something uh you know you want to start a website agency do websites you want to launch a digital product you want to launch a course start with a small course don't start like building this massive course for six to 12 months build a small one just launch something start getting validation start seeing if this works you have no benefit in wasting like a year building a course if you can launch like a mini course with the same headline same goal same principles and you know if you don't feel comfortable about it add like two sessions of coaching for free on top of this course uh, just so that you have that interaction with people you can actually help them they feel that it's good uh, the less time you spend in the launch, 
the better it is. But then when you actually follow that advice and you're not overthinking anymore, so you're actually starting to launch things, I convince you it's happening. I'm so happy for you. Post it in the Facebook group. I'll be so happy to hear it. Uh, but then the second problem that I tend to see, and this happens like we have like this little challenge going on uh, inside the group <clears throat> and there's a handful of people and the goal is that we launch things together. So we basically get together every week uh, and we launch products that potentially I mean, I'm not even looking at the 100K. I'm looking like, how can we scale way beyond the 100K for these people? And we actually had one uh, woman there that just posted a product. Uh, she's four weeks in the program and she hit a, her first thousand dollar sale. And this product, I, like, I truly like see it. Uh, we freaking worked on it for four weeks and we in those those four weeks, we weren't building that product. We built this product in two days, but in those four weeks, we were building the skills and the community so that while we were launching different mini product, we figured out that this one product was going to be the one that we could sell at a thousand dollars and we could probably get a hundred people pretty fast. Uh, so I'm really excited. She just got her first sale. We're going to scale that and see where that goes. But that happened because she's not overthinking it. But then the second problem that tends to happen in those challenges is focus. Like I said, in those four weeks, it was all about figuring things out. And so it's very easy to get distracted. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I heard my friend does that and just made a million. Oh, like uh, I have like my sister who does this and maybe I should, you know, print T-shirts or something because, uh, you know, there are people who are millionaires printing T-shirts. Uh, and so what I always tend to mention, which is the second problem, when you have fixed the overthinking, uh, which you know you do by either having a community, a mentor, just stopping overthinking and just launching things, uh, the, the second problem that tends to arise is you now execute super fast, you know you execute super fast, and so you tend to go into different paths and there's no focus. And because there's no focus, you don't spend enough time to properly get to that point where you can automate and scale things. And so that second problem is going to be a huge issue. It's not going to stop you from getting your first 100K, but it's definitely going to slow you down. And so the way you solve focus is usually you need an outside perspective. Uh, what I call an accountability buddy. Every week you just call with someone, you explain what you did that week, and then you have one goal that you remind yourself every week on that call, which is, you know, what's my, what's my goal for this year? What do I want to achieve? And it's are the actions that I did this week getting me closer to that? Uh, and you self-reflecting, like I tried self-reflecting about it. Sometimes you're so in it, you don't even realize it. So having an accountability buddy or a business coach, uh, those things really do help. Um, accountability buddies are free, of course, business coach is not, but they're worth it. Uh, and so they basically just try to explain to you, like, is this bringing you closer to your goals? So will building a t-shirt business when, you know, you want to put out, uh, uh, you know, an accountability group or something like that, uh, or build retreats or something like that, is that going to get you closer? T-shirt business to retreats, that's not going to get you closer. You know, you want to build a huge conference with thousands of people, you know, is building t-shirt, a t-shirt business or a blog, is, is that going to help you? Probably not. Uh, and so focus is necessary because within, let's say, building a retreat, there are many other products that you can launch that can actually engage people to get to retreat. For example, communities, uh, books, uh, content, uh, where you can engage people, nurture people, help them get to a specific point where they have enough money to go to your retreat. Uh, so all of these things, you know, they become much more relevant as you continue down your journey. And so with focus, what I mean is, you know, don't go all over the place in different industries, go all over the place in this one industry, in this one niche, uh, and, and get to a point where you're you know, having these products that actually work. And if they don't work, cut them right away because you need to be focused on the goal, which is, you know, I want to launch like a retreat that has like a thousand, a thousand people or something like that. That's a very specific goal. I definitely don't want to do that. I want to keep my retreats like simple, <laughs> but, uh, but just, you know, you need a clear goal. And based on that goal, you need to evaluate every single week, if not every single day, uh, there's actually a good book that I recommend. Um, 10x by Grant Cardone. He's pretty shouty, but that book is really good and I recommend it. Uh, I don't watch his YouTube videos that much, but but that book, high recommendation. Uh, and so basically he mentions the way he does his goals is every single day he evaluates them. And I love that. Um, so every single day evaluate it. But if you can't evaluate it yourself, at least have once a week a call with somebody who's outside of your business who can just remind you of those goals. 
And so those are kind of like my tips uh, and the two biggest problems that I definitely see uh, that you should be aware of and hopefully solve. And if you have any questions, you know, just join the Facebook group. I'll be in there. I'll help people out. Uh, and if you're not focused, I'll definitely like catch you and be like, hey, you, you should look into that. Also giving away a ton of uh, passive income development workshops right now in return for a testimonial, only if it's good, of course. Uh, and so if you want to do that, join the link in the comments below and I'll see you there.